With Elden Ring smashing the sales chart these past few weeks, it's been yet another success for the Japanese From Software studio. However, equally as consistent is the game's inconsistent performance on all platforms, with PC not being the saving grace this time. So just what are the differences between platforms? Can you remove and resolve the issues on PC? What are the settings? Where is the very best place to die? I mean play. Now we covered the game before launch on the current gen consoles using patch 1.02 and that is the same patch available across all platforms still to this day. So nothing has changed from that version, apart from the inconsistency as you play. Obviously more patches will come, but this is early March and this is the version we're covering. So the first thing to discuss is what are the variety of settings available across last generation, now generation, and obviously the PC spec. Well, the first thing is, unsurprisingly, there's some heavy cutbacks, certainly in the Xbox One version, which seriously has significant reductions over and above what you would expect, bringing the settings down to lower than lowest on PC. If we take a comparison here to the PlayStation 4 version, what we can see is significant reduction in both ambient occlusion, the LOD, so you get much less grass and foliage off into the background, lower quality textures, lower resolution shadow maps, and overall just a lower quality image because the resolution scaling, all versions have dynamic scaling aside PC, scales much lower. The PlayStation 4 scales from 1920 by 1080 down to 1536 by 864 with it often being around that level or just below 1080p. The Xbox One here in the S model scales at best 1600 by 900 and a counted low of 1200 by 675 with it often being at 720p levels in any sort of action as is the case here in many of the foliage comparison shots. As is always the case though with DRS, all versions may go lower and higher, but these were the most consistent ranges caught, true of all versions tested here. The result is ambient occlusion that almost appears to be off on Xbox One S, and it's lower than lowest settings of grass than PC. The dynamic time of day is also a factor with sun and overcast playing into the visual makeup, but all sections here were tested at noon. The Xbox One S is flatter due to that reduced foliage, ambient occlusion, bringing the depth of the scene down. In addition to this, the reduced level of detail on trees drawing in and a generally softer and noisier image at all times. Outside of this, the PlayStation 4 boosts leave the settings as shown on screen, closest I can get to PC identical settings. What must be noted here is the gap between PlayStation 4 and Xbox One is almost identical to the levels we saw back in 2013 or 14 when the generation launched. At times, over two times higher resolution on PlayStation 4 along with higher effects, textures and even performance. Note this because I'll touch on it later. Those PlayStation 4 settings are the same as we see on the PlayStation Pro and Xbox One X. The caveat is all seem to run a dynamic effect setting, even on the PS4 and Xbox One S, most likely. Now the resolution scale with Pro using a checkerboard solution here with 3200 by 1800 which it is most often at, but it can go as low as 2688 by 1512 in heavier sections. The Xbox One X can hit 3840 by 2160 but it is often at that lower level of 2688 by 1512. And as I noted in my previous video with the motion blur dynamically activating or not dependent on scene, we also see that effect carry over to things like shadow resolution, depth of field and maybe even more across the tested sections here. You can see this reduce here on Series X under the tree and bush. Just as I slow it down, look at the shadows and ambient occlusion reduce. This means that on Xbox One X and Pro, the settings match PS4 and foliage draw in shadow quality, motion blur and even depth of field can dynamically scale on and off. With this shot here on the Xbox One X showing in the cinematics, the Pro has depth of field applied in the background and the Xbox One X does not. Predominantly though, this leaves us with visual settings that are the same between the Pro and the PS4 and the Xbox One X, with the Xbox One S scaling even lower on some of these to compensate. It can also include things like LOD, with some things like the Burning Pyre being further out on the PS4 than they are on the Pro and even the PS5. This is likely linked to a resolution and or frame rate target in the game's engine code and allows a lot of these elements to dynamically scale, which is actually very, very good. This is also present on PC in the main settings menu. By turning this on, then the effects on PC can also scale with GPU and or CPU power. 
such as removing keyframe interpolation when enemies are in abundance or further away within the camera frustum. As such, lower effects on Xbox One X such as shadows and ambient occlusion at times over the Pro, which seems to manage to scale slightly less, again pointing to the fact the team have more experience on that platform. The Series X and Series S and PS5 all operate as per the last video, which is the maximum settings as per PC, aside the grass, which is at the high settings. This is when in the quality mode at least, which targets 3840 by 2160 on PS5 and Series X, and 2560 by 1440 on the Series S. When we move to frame rate mode though, this allows the resolution to scale along with the effects as discussed, meaning resolutions can still hit the same highs but are mostly anywhere between 1800p and 1512p which is the lower level for the PS5 and Series X, and on the Series S they are 1080p or even 1008p most often. In addition, shadow resolution and ambient occlusion are also reduced within the Series S being the lowest than Series X, and sometimes PS5 is actually higher than the Series X, and this is true of resolutions and effects, but never to any significantly noticeable degree in gameplay. Which leaves the PC having its improvements coming down to grass and resolution, along with effects having the choice to always lock to the highest ones if so chosen. The effect does not appear to make much of a difference when you turn that dynamic effect on there, or at least on my RX 6800 GPU, even at 1800p we are sub 60fps with it on or off, but this is simply because the GPU load is not the issue here, well not predominantly anyway, but more on that in performance. From a PC perspective it means that increases are almost non-existent over the current generation consoles which is clearly the team's target and has always been the case. The engine does scale but the options within are built around the PlayStation 5 as the engine has been for over a decade now. Being an iteration of the Demon's Souls engine that kicked off on PlayStation 3 with significant improvements and increases since then, not least of which moving through three generations of PlayStation platforms, and it presents a discussion area that is largely ignored when many discuss these types of comparisons. For a game like Elden Ring, it was never designed to be or needs to be a graphical showcase. The art, presentation and technical focus is more around delivering Hidetaki Miyazaki's design and gameplay focus along with the rest of the teams. And just like the challenging and discovery focused gameplay rather than being led gameplay, this is and should always be the team's choice. As such, this does not require to scale above those target specs that they had. For the visual quality and effects in mind, it does the job. As such, the PC not having anything more of merit to improve on is merely a shame, but not something that should at all be demanded. But when it comes to performance though, that's not the case at all. However, the team have always been guilty of maximising the hardware for their aims, or at least not investing huge amounts of effort into optimising those gameplay and artistic goals within a stable performance target. So much so, that with the large focus on this cross-generational release being squared at the current generation of consoles, the lion's share of the market in the PS4 and Xbox One have been left out of that conversation, but not today. What we see is a team that has continued its path of delivery to a T. The heavy sacrifices made to the Xbox One version just covered and the addition of DRS to both still presents largely terrible performance that comes in two flavours. Both have bad frame pacing and Achilles heel within the engine since forever. Likely not any one thing but related to memory, data allocation, usage along with other areas that can cause frame times to constantly skip from 16 to 50 milliseconds with a target to resolve a frame rate of 30 FPS. which. It does okay at, at times, but this game really highlights why I say frame rates are not as important as frame times, meaning the uneven cadence of delivery here makes the game feel like it's dropping frames when in fact it's skipping between three delivery times, which feels bad to play and to watch. Now this is not to say it does not dip below that 30fps target, as it does, but the PS4 does a better job of holding that within the mid-20s noted at some heavier sections 
but all large games like this may have worse areas I'm not going to cover everything. As noted, the fact that they have not capped the game to 30 FPS really is the right thing to do as it would only make the heavier sections worse as it largely limits itself to 30 FPS anyway. The Xbox One mind is always lower than the PS4 which gives us a sub 20 FPS reading at the worst points meaning on top of all the reductions mentioned we also see performance that is some 25 to 30 percent worse at times in addition to running over two times the resolution on the PS4. What does this mean then? Well clearly that the team have much better understanding and focus on the PlayStation hardware and largely API. In no small part helped by the development tools provided within console SDKs that are necessary for teams to find and fix performance issues, bugs and more within development, which is perfectly normal. Without these and the knowledge support of the APIs, this is much harder. With Xbox not being a big market in Japan, which these games also sell very well in, I think it is not contentious to state that the team are not as well versed with the Xbox platform API and associated changes required. Notably, that would be those SRAM elements that I'm sure is a factor in why we are seeing such a disparity between the last generation consoles. Ultimately though, the performance here is worse than Dark Souls 3 on both consoles by and large, with the Xbox One being sub-30 and 720p the majority of the time, making it look and play pretty poor. The professional version of these consoles does improve this, with performance now being much closer to that 30fps level, even in the heavier tested sections, however again they are unlocked and rarely at all keep a consistent 30fps line. They do much better though, meaning we still get pacing issues as we play, some dips under 30 but the Pro and the Xbox One X are now much closer in performance and visual quality meaning the superior design of the Xbox One, no SRAM, and a beefier GPU are likely a factor in most of this increase. The team and engine's history with the PlayStation API still results in a game that is ever so slightly better on the Pro at these levels of scrutiny, but in normal play they are practically identical and a significant improvement over the Xbox One and even the base PS4. To that level they feel okay when compared to prior From Software releases on those base consoles. PC is where we see arguably the worst performance of the lot, and as noted regarding Xbox API, this seems to be at least partially the issue here. Moving to RetroX 12 is a big step for any team. A big part of that is API state control is reduced, and now a big element of memory allocation, data pools, copyrights, reads, etc. all now become a focus for the engine programmer to resolve. With the driver element of Nvidia or AMD also being less of a core factor, but not removed, mind. As such, they have struggled with adapting the methods required for a unified memory pool like the consoles have to the split pools on PC. The shader compilation requirements in DirectX 12 over DX11 and I'm sure a myriad of other aspects that I and they could list. 
The result is we see GPU drops when in denser areas, even at 1800p on my powerful AMD GPU. CPU single core power can also be a factor, as here on my RX 2700, where we can see 90% single thread limit at times, but largely the engine appears to be waiting on data or asynchronous jobs are not as effective as on console, giving us not only stutter in performance, but also good old fashioned slowdown, with animation and game logic slowing down as these delays affect the engine's next loop cycle. Only the team can know the cause of these issues, and I'm certain no one thing is to blame, but instead a collection of bugs adapting to the new API, updating work to better suit the performance levels and targets of PC. Now, time may see them fix this fully, partially, or not at all, but at the moment, the performance on PC is woefully under the level both required and expected. This leaves it as a frustration as the PC version could be as good if not better than the PS5 release, but due to the persistent issues that happen even on the highest end PC you can get, it can be worse than the last generation versions at times and that is simply not good enough. And this was true of the review code also with the latest patch making little significant improvement to that. As these are not related to shader cache issues or just memory or just CPU but all of these and more, the team will need to spend time fixing these or bring in external support with the X12 and PC specific optimization experience. As it stands, the PC version is one that will likely leave all owners disappointed with results and nothing I tested here including 1080p low settings could resolve any of this, even playing with shader cache allocation. Largely, these are all non-hardware related issues. The current generation is still almost the best of the lot, with the Series S not offering as high a performance level as the Series X and PS5, but still better than other versions at this point. You can check out our last video to learn more on that, but performance is unlocked on both modes, and frame rate is largely around 45 FPS when in frame rate mode, but happily remains between 16 and 33 milliseconds in frame time. Series X is better with frame rate getting to 60 FPS at times, but only in quieter segments, with most action being between the low 40s at worst and the low 50s at best. Due to the variation in frame times, any VRR option here will not resolve this as it can fluctuate far too much for that to work, and the entire focus for VRR is for games that run without V-Sync, and here the game engine never exceeds 16 milliseconds, which is always the next refresh cycle of the screen at 60 FPS anyway. It will also not fix the input lag that comes from these uneven delivery rates, which should mean that the PS5 is the best version of the lot then. Well, even though we can see some small gains in performance over the Series X, they never amount to a significant improvement, and as such, even this version suffers often as it can be in the low mid to mid 50s, almost all the time, with heavier segments such as the Dragon Battle bringing it lower. Which is a surprising result, and one that shows the strength of the PlayStation's backwards compatibility choices, is that the absolute best way to play is you can play the PS4 version on the PS5 either via disc or download and then you get the same settings and resolution of that PS4 Pro version I discussed earlier with an almost fully locked 60 FPS at all times resulting in the clear best place to play Elden Ring at present across all formats tested. The sacrifices from the bigger version are small enough to never make a huge difference unless of course you just like frolicking in the grass. And wrapping up the coverage is around loading times and sacrifices. The PS4 Pro is slower than the PS5, but not by a huge margin. 8 seconds with an SSD hard drive inside it, and on the PS4 without an SSD, a standard hard drive, 11 seconds. Really reinforcing what I'm saying about the API utilization here, with the team using what Sony have provided them, and direct storage not being an option on the Xbox consoles just yet, we see a bigger delta. Even respawns are around 12 to 20 seconds, very similar what we're seeing on the Series X and Series S even with their super fast SSD because they cannot utilize it fully here. 
That means that when you move to that PS4 Pro backwards compatibility option, yes, you're not getting the levels of PS5, but even then, that can be beaten by a much slower SSD-powered PC. Six seconds here for fast travel versus almost eight on the PS5. But again, this is all dependent on where you load and where you load to, but respawns are the quickest of the lot. Six seconds on PS5 versus around 12 seconds on the PS4 Pro. Yes, it's slower, but it's still faster than the Series X. It's close to the PC there or thereabouts, but ultimate means the sacrifices to play that backwards compatibility option are not that large. And ultimately, it's the best and only way you can get a performance level that's acceptable from this title at this point. Will that make a difference? Will you not play the game? Likely not. It's still a cracker. It's still likely loved. But overall, that's a deep dive in performance. And if you like these deep dives in technology, performance, game-related information, then keep it IGN and we'll be back for much, much more. And I'll catch you on the next one.